Okay, wine number three. I said California Cabernet Franc Ludit is the name of the winery. Uh, it's grapes are sourced from Happy Canyon in Santa Inez Valley in the Central Coast near Santa Barbara. Um, it this is a, a project by Eric Railsback and uh, and Justin Willett, a winemaker. Uh, Eric Eric uh, and his brother Lyle also have. Um, Railsback Frere winery that they started not too long ago. Lyle was the longtime national sales director for Kermit Lynch, and we've had some of those Kermit Lynch wines in the past. And um, Eric is actually co-owner of Verve, which is one of the kind of culty wine shops uh, that's in New York, Chicago, in the Bay Area right now. So this is a project that he started sourcing grapes with Justin Willett, who's got a small winery and does some consulting too and uh, really influenced by Loire style. So California, most definitely a California wine, California grapes, uh, but but pattern not after those big uh, oaky, uh, jammy uh, California Cabernets, but more over, uh, more based on a, on a, a Loire style, if you will. Uh, a Ludit in, uh, in, uh, is a French wine term. It is a, it is a, Description of a small wine place. It's like a, the smallest possible uh, geographic designation for a named vineyard, if you will. So just think of it as a, as a, a, a more sort of defined smaller wine place, if you will. Uh, and that's where that's where the name comes from. So um, if you happen to uh, to hear about it, it's not just a vineyard, but it's a, a named section within a vineyard. And so um, uh, that's that's the name that they grabbed for it. Uh, so this is not this is going to be riper tasting, but not any bigger. Um, first wine is uh, was aged in um, has some uh, barrel aging. Second wine did not, but this one has neutral barrel aging, five year plus old. Uh, barrels, uh, undergoes malolactic fermentation. So you're going to get some of that creaminess, more of a richer mouthfeel. Uh, so it's going to taste more California in style, but it actually is lower in alcohol than uh, Loire wine. So you say to yourself, but Loire is, um, you know, middle of France and cooler climate, um, you know, traditionally, but, but these days anything goes, uh, whereas California is much hotter. Uh, Central Coast, uh, you know, Santa Barbara area, mountainous and big Pacific uh, influence, cool water. So uh, so in, in a lot of cases, you can find uh, grapes that don't get quite as ripe or, uh, or make wines that are not quite as high in alcohol. But again, I think you're going to taste the richness in this wine, and it's going to um, be a very pleasing wine. It's also, you know, I'm not big on ratings. I don't really give ratings of wines. This wine actually has a, had a 95 point rating from wine enthusiasts. That might be like the highest rated wine that, that we've had so far. Uh, one of the things I found amusing though, and again, you're going to find berry, dark berry characteristics in a lot of these wines. Um, this is a kind of like a boysenberry characteristic, if you will. Again, more of those sort of dried herbs. This is not going to be a especially green tasting, um, but you're going to get some green in that again from the pyrazines. Um, but, uh, you know, so you get dark fruit, touches of red fruit in these wines, varying degrees of, um, uh, uh, of mouthfeel based on how it's aged, um, herbaceousness, but again, more dried herbs, uh, in this case, one thing that'll come through in all these is a finish that ever like a mineral, a real minerality, a real snap. It's very pronounced in the, in the Loire wine. Uh, you know, almost like a graphite or, or, or like a, I hate to say, use the phrase, but I'll use it, licking limestone. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> I don't advocate doing that, but if you ever happen to lick a piece of limestone and, and you know, um, I think you know what I mean. Um, not that I have, I've heard people say that. So, um, but it's, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a chalkiness and minerality on the finish of these, of these wines too, a lot of, a lot of times because of where they grow. Again, uh, great classic protein and, uh, you know, a, a protein and vegetable kind of a dish. That doesn't mean you can't have starches in your dish, grains in your dish either, but I think you're, it really is enhanced by, um, 
by that combination of the two. And that's not such a bad thing because I think a lot of us have gotten gone eating in that direction too. You know, it was the easiest thing we've cut out of, of a lot of meals is, is the starch. And um, uh, so you, you, it's not uncommon to, you know, a plate, a plate of food doesn't seem uncommon if it's really focused on a protein and, and vegetables or, uh, or vegetables and maybe, um, you know, that protein doesn't necessarily have to be meat either. Could be, could be nuts. Um, uh, as as an example, uh, it could come from uh, beans, legumes, so uh, you know, lentils, as an example. So um, so I, I so I think these um, these wines would all go well with those kinds of uh, dishes too. So um, that's it. Uh, those are three wines, and I'm gonna get these up and out to you, and uh, I will send a date soon for our monthly zoomer. <laughs>